you do reach, I think, what is a kind of difficult decision on whether or not to continue to celebrate something like Confederate Memorial Day. And one of the things that I wanted to bring up here is that some Confederate traditions sort of came about in the 1960s. One of those was, for example, putting the Confederate flag or the rebel flag. It actually is the rebel flag. The Confederate flag was a different one. The, the one that you're familiar with, the stars and bars. The, the, the one that you see on all the uh, Sons of the Confederacy shirts, <laughs> those ones. So one of the traditions that sort of cropped up in the 1960s is a big middle finger to black people who were struggling for their civil rights in that era like putting the flags on the Capitol and that kind of thing. That was something specifically done to basically stick in somebody's eye and say, you know, up yours more than anything else. And that was a horrible reaction to do. I'm glad that the state, long before this argument about flags, I'm glad that the state of Alabama took theirs down, I think back in the late 90s. Because they saw that it was something that it was originally done out of spite. It was originally done specifically to try to insult and belittle and degrade a certain part of the population. And because of that, even if it was completely benign, and I don't have a problem with somebody liking the rebel flag, using it in decorations, because the vast majority of people that use it today use it specifically as a memento of Southern pride. To them, it's not a symbol of hate. They just do it because they like it, they think it looks cool, and they're proud to be from the South. But there were gestures like that to put it on a public building and to do so specifically to degrade a part of the population in that state. And that was wrong, and I'm glad we ended that practice. I'm glad that we ended it a long time before the PC police came in because I would have hated to have thought that they had something to do with it. It was the right thing to do for it to be taken down. At least on official government buildings. I don't have a problem with people flying it on their own private property or anything like that. Heck, I lived right under the big rebel flag on the interstate. That was that was uh, where I lived for a little while. It was right underneath that. Our property was butted right up against it. So I don't have a problem with that. I'm just saying that on an official government building, especially considering the historic context of it being put up in the civil rights movement in that era specifically to try to show solidarity with Jim Crow, there was a good reason for that gesture to be undone. It had no place beside our state flag and the American flag. And so there are certain traditions like that that I understand that people get offended about and it's better to end them just because of the way that they came about, even if the tradition itself may seem kind of benign. So far as I could tell, and I did as much research as I could on this, I couldn't find out when Alabama first instituted Confederate Memorial Day. Maybe somebody out there has the research on it and could do a better job with this than I could. I couldn't find it. It doesn't seem like it was something that started in the 1960s. It seems like this is something that has been going on in the state for a very long time and then just sort of got codified in uh, officially into Alabama as a official state holiday. I couldn't find the exact date of when that was, and if somebody would be willing to look that up for me, if, if somebody could find it, because I looked and looked and I couldn't find it, it doesn't seem as though this is one of those traditions that came about because of that. And because of that, I don't see it as, as really being something that is a big problem. There was... An article that I saw not too long ago in the New Republic, and actually a, a buddy of mine was the one that referred it to me. He's somebody that's kind of moderate, somewhat uh, left of center. And he was asking me, since it was Confederate Memorial Day the other day, what my thoughts were on it. And it essentially suggested that we turn the day that, and by the way, that happened uh, last week, that it turn the day that General Lee surrendered to General Grant in Appomattox Courthouse, that we turn that into a national holiday that has celebrated the defeat of the Confederacy the same way that we celebrate VE Day, you know, or the victories in other wars that we fought. And my immediate reaction to that was, it just seems vindictive. In the same way that we just went over, how it was wrong for the individual states to try to 
basically give a middle finger to a part of their population, specifically black people that were fighting for the rights that were due them, and they were fighting for a just cause in the 1960s, just fighting to be treated as equals to, to white people. It was wrong for the states to do something specifically just to spite a particular group of its population. And especially based on the wording of this particular document, and it's an article from 2015, so it was a little while ago. You can look it up. It's on the New Republic. I'm sure you'll be able to find it with a quick Google search if you want to read the whole thing. But essentially, especially with the tone and the way that this was done, you could tell that it was nothing but pure, unadulterated spite. And to help people that may not necessarily be on one side of this debate or the other kind of understand what I'm talking about here. Let's say that you have a brother, and your brother and you got into this really huge fight at one point something that just about ended your relationship and, and you got to the point to where you had just about cut each other out of your lives completely, never saw each other again. That was something that you were contemplating. That's how bad this fight got. And eventually, eventually what happened is that you realized you were wrong. You realized that you had screwed up and your brother won the fight. You came back, you reconciled, even though it was tumultuous and difficult, you worked through it because you thought it was worth it to have a good relationship with your brother again, and eventually you got to a place where things were pretty good. Let's say that that's the scenario you're dealing with. How would you feel if your brother, even though you know that you messed up, you know that you were wrong and your brother was on the right side of that debate? How would you feel if your brother celebrated the day that you came back and um, said that you were sorry and admitted defeat, and specifically referred to it as a victory day for yourself, that you were celebrating specifically in the way that you were, it was me winning that fight. Doesn't that seem incredibly vindictive to you? And so the reason that I think that on the opposite side of this, celebrating the defeat of the Confederacy is a really bad idea, one of the things that people forget is that President Lincoln when this was resolved, was all about reconciliation. He wanted to make the transition back to unity as smooth as humanly possible. He wanted us to be one nation again, bring the South back in. There were a lot of people in the Republican Party, a lot of people that he even respected politically, that were suggesting that we punish the South and make it as hard on them as possible, and we make them pay reparations for all the cost and the war and everything. And Lincoln was saying, no, 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 no. They're our countrymen. They're our brothers. Let's treat them that way. There's a certain level of mercy that Lincoln had that I think ought to be observed here. That while, even though it's pretty clear that the, the South was on the wrong side of this conflict, and even though it's pretty clear that while for some the fight wasn't about slavery, there were several that that's specifically what it was about. There was a speech by Jefferson Davis's vice president that I remember in his inaugural speech, he specifically stated that the foundation of the Confederacy was on the right of a man to own another man. So there's no doubt that for some people in the Confederacy, they definitely believed in slavery and thought it was a good thing, and that is reprehensible and, and should never even be, it's so wrong to even contemplate that that a just society would allow one man to be enslaved by another. But nonetheless, that's where you stand. That even though the South was wrong, that they completely screwed up, and that the North happened to be in the right of that fight, it would still be horribly vindictive and, and seemingly like something that you would do specifically to stir up strife and to anger certain people and sort of say, uh, stick it to them by making the defeat a national holiday. Maybe I'm incorrect on that. Feel free to argue with me on that if you want to, but that's the way it seems to me. So finally, there was one other thing 
it was brought up in this article, and this is something that I know us in Alabama are specifically attuned to because there are so many Confederate monuments, so many Confederate memorials. I went to school not far from the Confederate Memorial Park. I mean, this is something that is a part of most Alabamians, if not daily life, certainly a part of their life that they see Confederate monuments, Confederate memorials. And so the the haste to remove them has been something that has been incredibly problematic in this same article in the New Republic that is suggesting that we ought to make the defeat of the Confederacy a national holiday. This same guy also argues that we should be getting rid of all Confederate monuments, which I know comes as no surprise considering his stance on the Confederacy. But one thing that he specifically points to, and remember this was written in 2015, just four years ago, so he specifically cited in this article that oh, there are going to be some people, and this is before Trump even announced his presidency, before the thing in uh, Charlottesville happened with the, the, neo -na uh, the neo Nazis and the white nationalists and the alt right, before all of that happened. He's saying that there are some people that suggest that if we get rid of the Confederate memorials and the Confederate mo monuments and get rid of Confederate Memorial Day, that what is going to happen next is there are going to be people that are seriously calling for the removal of George Washington and Thomas Jefferson and anybody else in the American experience, in the American history archives that own slaves, that we, we should be denouncing all of them and not studying them as heroes in history. And he essentially boils it down to say, but that's just insane. That will never happen. And you remember that I said exactly the same thing when all this talk about taking down Confederate memorials and Confederate monuments, for example, in New Orleans and in several other cities across the South and even in some places in the North, that all of this is going to lead to people saying that we shouldn't have any kind of memory of and we shouldn't have anything that honors Washington and, Jefferson, and, and Thomas Jefferson. That was something that I predicted. And here he is in 2015, not that long ago, saying, oh, that's insane. Nobody, no matter how far left they are, is going to say that. Oh, really? Well, it's been a few years since then. Let's go ahead and, and I turn your attention to this. These are several, several different articles. You can look at them yourself. I'm not going to go through all of them. But these are all different occasions, different instances of not just random people, prominent people on the left calling for the removal of, of Washington and Jefferson monuments. There's also, you can see down in the bottom left, change.org, that there are people that are trying to remove statues of Thomas Jefferson from a college campus. You remember that even though this one isn't listed, there was a movement to try to get George Washington taken out of George Washington University and that he should no longer be the mascot, even though it's the university named after him. And so you're looking at all of this and you can see that clearly he was wrong, that there were people that decided, yes, it is a good idea to get rid of Thomas Jefferson and George Washington because they own slave owners. Therefore, we can't honor anything good that they did. We can't honor anything that they accomplished in life because they own slavery. Now, I would tell you, and I've told you many times in the past, you can go look up the archive clips of me talking about this with Thomas Jefferson, with George Washington, about how they have been woefully mischaracterized as pro-slavery rights advocates, and they're not. Neither one of them are. They both believe that slavery should be done away with. And, you know, like I said, you can go and look up my research on that. But nonetheless, even if that weren't true, do we really want to get to a place to where a person is completely defined by one specific position that they took or one specific thing that they did and then ignore all their other accomplishments. Ignore every good thing that they did in life. Because when I see monuments to Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., I'm pretty sure that they're not honoring the fact that he was not all that good at fidelity. That he, you know, we have from, from the historical record, he had problems staying faithful. And I don't think that he's unworthy of honor because of that, even though that's a pretty significant sin and it's an immoral practice for sure, that we should just ignore all the other amazing things that he did in his life. And so I'm not saying that we give excuse or we give cover for sin, 
But I'm also saying that even if that were true, even if all the horrible things that they attribute to Washington and Jefferson were actually true, which they're not, even if they were, do we really want to get to the point to where nothing that anybody, nothing that they did, nothing that the accomplishments of their life count because of the bad things that they did? When you're looking at any individual in history, you have to take the good and the bad. Just to use a biblical example really quickly, yes, David was an amazing king of Israel. He was the giant slayer. He was somebody that brought Israel to its highest point, somebody that is referred to as a man after God's own heart. Yet at one point he did kill a man so that he could take his wife, whom he had already slept with and impregnated. At one point he refused to enforce the law, even though that was his job as king, and that led to him being unseated by his own son. And so you have to remember that these people are human beings and they made mistakes and they did things and they held beliefs that were untrue. I'm not saying that you ignore that or give that a pass. I'm just saying when we're looking at any historic figure, it would we would do well to remember that. We can honor them for the good things they did without full-on uh, condoning every single action that they ever took in life. <laughs> Oh, hey, what are you still doing here? Video's over. I'm off the clock, so go watch another one of my videos or something. Or better yet, you could subscribe to the channel and click the notification bell. And if you do that, then you'll get a notification when I actually am on the air and you can watch me then. In the meantime, I'm going to take a nap.